One of UEFN's newest features that was released a few months ago is the ability to change how the UI looks for the player. You no longer have to use the same UI that is used within Fortnite. This is a pretty big deal because one of the hardest things for us creators is determining how to create a game that doesn't make you feel like you are playing Fortnite. Currently, you are able to customize the player's health and shield bars, you can add images, you can customize how pop-up dialogues work, and you can even add the new stat manager device to the UI as well. I'm going to be showing how to customize all of these in a series of videos, and today I will be going over player info. The first thing we are going to do is set up player name, which is very easy. The first thing you want to do is you want to right click in your main folder, go to user interface, and then click widget blueprint. You then have to pick the parent class. And for this example, we are going to choose user widget. The other one is what we'll choose for custom dialogue later in another video. From here, it brings you to where you can design your own UI layout. The first thing you want to do is go to the left side under panel and click and drag canvas onto the layout in the middle here. This is going to be how you reference the player's screen. Picture this outline as the player's full screen size. Now we want to drag in a text block and rename it player name. And we want to anchor it where you want it to be located near. Anchoring is very important. If you do not set this up correctly, it will not work. In order to make this connect to the player's information, we need to add a view model. You can go to the bottom and click view bindings. You can have this section stationed at the bottom by pressing dock in layout. Now from here, we want to click add view model. This is how it will know to track the health and the shields of a specific player. For player information, you are going to want to click this one that says HUD controller team slash squad player info list. Now click on the text block and then click add widget player name. From here, we just want to click this field and select text. Then we just go to this field and select HUD player info list view model. Then we're going to click controlling player info and then select player name. That's all you have to do. You can make the text a bit more fancy if you want over here on the right side of the screen. You can change the text, you can add a border, you can change the size, you can add an outline, and there's some more other features that are located over here as well. Next, we are going to set up the player's character avatar icon on the screen so that when a player is playing your game, they will see their skin that they are currently using. This part is fairly simple as well. All we have to do is click on image in the top left corner and drag it into the canvas. Size up the square to the approximate size that you want the character's icon to be and let's name this player skin and change the anchor to the bottom left or wherever you want it to be located near. Then we will go down to the bottom here where it says view bindings and click on add widget player skin. Make sure you click on the image here first and then it will show up if it's not showing. Once it has been added, then we need to click here and select brush which is used for images. Then we need to go to conversion functions and select make image brush from texture. Now we need to go to where it says image. Click on the field and select HUD player info list view model, then controlling player info and then player avatar icon. That's all you have to do for this. Click compile and save, then back to UEFN main screen. Before we test it out, we will want to put down a HUD controller device. You're going to want to scroll to the bottom and in this section, add your widget blueprint that we just created. With this device, you can remove any unwanted default widgets from appearing on the screen. Now we can hop into the game and see how it looks. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is customize our player health and shield bars. Let's add some text to the screen. This is going to represent the numbers of your health and shield. So on the left side, you will see text block and drag it into the canvas. This one we will call health. And this one we will call shield. It is important to name all text blocks up here in the top right corner so it can prevent confusion later down the road. These are just going to be straight up text. They will not change at all during the match. Now we are going to add in two more text blocks and this will represent the numbers of the health bar and shield bar that the player is currently at. We will call these health num and shield num.
from here click on the health num text box this is very important and then over here we will be able to now click add widget health num now you want to click here and it will bring up a selection window so here you must click text but because we want this text to be an integer we need to change it here we need to select conversion functions and then select to text integer. Then over here, you need to click this little binding link, then click inside the black field here. Then we click HUD player info list and then controlling player info. And this is where we select what part of the player's information we want to track. In this case, we want to track player's health. So we will select health. You could also set up max health where if the max health in a game is set to 100 or 300, whatever it's set as, it will automatically show based on the game settings. That way you can display the character has say 57 out of 100 health kind of thing. We now have the health number set up on the screen. Now let's do pretty much the exact same thing for shields. Click on the text box, then click add widget shield num, then click here and select text. Then click over here and select conversion functions to text integer. Then down here, we're going to select shield. So this time we go HUD player list info, controlling player info, and then click shield. Now hit compile and save so we could check out how it looks in the game. As you can see, we now have our health and shield numbers. If we pick up a shield that I placed down here, you will see our shield numbers go up. And when I step into this damage volume I place down over here, you will see the shield go down and the health go down. If it reaches zero, then you will be eliminated. Now I'm going to show you how to make health bars and shield bars that decreases as your health points go down. First, we need to create a new material by right clicking in your main folder or wherever you choose and call it health bar. For this, we will need to create this material blueprint I got this blueprint set up from How To Boss. Go check him out and he will explain in more detail about the setup. This guy is quick when something new releases in UEFN, so I highly recommend checking him out. Before we start, we are going to need a white square image. You can just make one in Photoshop or you can just download one from somewhere on Google. Then you will want to import this into your folder. First, we want to change the material domain from surface to user interface. Then we also want to change the blend mode to translucent. Now we can just open our content drawer and drag in our square image here. Now we need to make a constant three. Easy way to do that is to hold three on your keyboard and left click anywhere to see it pop up. Next, we want to create a multiply node. Just right click and you can search for it here. Once you put it in, then you can connect our constant three to multiply A. And then the texture sample, you can connect to multiply B. Next, we can add in a linear interpolate or lerp. It's called for short, and we will connect multiply to lerp A, and then connect lerp to the final color. We can connect our texture sample RGB to lerp B. Then we want to take texture sample A to opacity over here. This name will be whatever you named your material. Next, we will add a scalar parameter and change the name to progress. We can then change the default value to 100. This is what we will need to match our player's HP. Next, we need to put in a multiply node here and change the B value to 0 0.01. We can now add in a remap value range and connect multiply to input S. Then we will add in append as well as a single constant by holding one and left clicking. Connect remap value range result to append A and then connect the single constant to append B. Once we finish that, we can add a texture coordinate and a subtract node. We will connect texture coordinate to subtract A and then we can connect append to subtract B. We can now add in seal and connect that to subtract. Then we can add a component mask and connect that to the other side of seal. From here, we will add a clamp to attach to component mask and then change the max to 100. Then we can connect the clamp to the lerp we have above. And that's all we're going to need to do from here. So hit compile and head back to your main screen. Now let's go back to our user interface we were making earlier. 
we are going to open up our content drawer and drag in the material we just made. We're going to name it health bar and then anchor it. Next, we will go to view bindings. Make sure to click on the health bar and then we can add widget health bar. Then select this field and select brush. Then over here, click this field, select conversion functions, then select widget. And then we want to select set scalar parameter. From here, we want to enter in progress in this field. This is going to reflect the node that we created in the material over here. You must make sure this is spelt the exact same as this, as it is case sensitive. The final thing we need to do here is set the value. Just click this little link icon, then click the field. And then from here, we want to select HUD player info list view model, then controlling player, and then select health. For the shield bar, it's literally the exact same process. What we can do is just copy our other material we just made for health and call this one shield bar. Then go into the material and just change it to the color that you want. That's all we have to do for the material for the shields. Now we go into the widget blueprint, add in the shield bar material from the content drawer, rename it and anchor it to the position where you want it. Next, we will do the same thing as before. Click on the shield bar, then go to view bindings and then click add widget shield bar. Then we want to click here and select brush from the list. Then over here, select conversion functions, widgets, and then select set scalar parameter. You want to put the parameter name to progress and then set the value to shield. And that's going to be it for setting up the shield bar. The final thing you can do if you like, once you've learned this, is to go into Photoshop and start playing around with some ideas of how to make some overlays so that it doesn't look so basic. I grabbed these images from Google just for this tutorial so that you can see how the overlays can really change the appearance of the UI. You can search on Google for cool avatar frames and the results should give you some inspiration for your own designs. And there you have it. You can now use this information to create your very own unique custom user interface that can make it almost seem like people are playing your game and not a Fortnite creative game. This is only one part of my custom UI tutorial series, so make sure you subscribe to see the rest of the series, such as custom stat UIs, custom tracker UIs, and custom pop-up dialogues with buttons. If you stayed and watched until the very end here, just know I appreciate you. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Stay spicy. I'm out. Peace.